Hi, today I'm going to talk about string R, namely how you can handle text or string objects in R. So, um, so first of all, let's uh, call the library, and then we're going to work uh, create a, a data set that we are going to work on. So we can see that in our data set we have four elements in it, and then each element is a text object, obviously, and then for you can see that um, they are different. Uh, they are just phone numbers in different format, so um, they can they can be separated by space or dash or even nothing in between, or even in 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 the third element we can see that there are three different numbers. There are three phone numbers and then separate by each separate by dash or uh, a dot or um or a, a dash, and then there's there's also a, a four slash separate um the last. Um, two up two elements here. So the key the the major parts in uh, using string R is that um, you have to create a pattern that you can capture the you can capture the 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 patterns in all your in 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 the format. So we all know that um, there are ten digits in the phone number, um, and then the first three digits. Um, are are the area codes, and then there's another three digits followed by another four digits. So basically, phone number come in three different groups. So now we are going to capture all three groups, and then and then we are going to create a pattern by uh, to do this. So we can see that. Um, so here I have a parenthesis here to capture the first three digits, and then we know that um, the first digit cannot be zero or one. It has to be a number between two to nine. So here we, we, we use a square bracket to capture whatever the first digit that is between 2 to 9. And then for the, th for the second and the third digits, they, they can be uh, any number, any digit between 0 to 9. So we use the curly bracket 0 stash 9 to, to represent that. And then for the curly bracket, we, we put 2. That means like um, we're going to capture two digits that follows, that, uh, that follows this pattern. So here, we, we can capture three digits here. The first digit between 2 to 9, the second, the second digit between 0 to 9, and then the third digit is between 0 and 9. So the curly bracket means like uh, capture two digits that follows the, the, this pattern here. And then we... And then proceed to the separation. So here we can see that our num our um, the format we have a dash, or a dot, or even nothing, or or maybe a space. So we have so in the in the square bracket, this is where we put in um, the 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 text that we are going to that we are going to uh, that we are look for. So we have a dot here, a space here, and then a dash here. So for this one that there's nothing here, we use um, a stars. At the uh, following the pattern, which means that we can either match um, any of these patterns or not or, or no. So it is like a zero, zero or one things. So uh, so the pattern it means like whether whether if if it satisfy the pattern here or not. So for the space, it means so for for the space for no non-space here, it means there's uh, it doesn't follow any pattern here. So that the the star would take care of this one here, and then for the next three digits, which is the same um, logic here, we are looking for any three digits between zero and nine, and then we are looking for three consecutive patterns. So here we have zero to nine. We define the pattern, and then we are looking for three digits here. The same thing here for the separation, and then the same thing here for the last four digit. So the square brackets means that th this is the pattern that we're looking for for a single digit. And then in, within the curly bracket, we have to define how many how many digits or how many um, what's the length for the pattern that is going to happen. And then we use the parentheses to extract the, the numbers in between. You will see the you will see what the parenthesis means later, and yeah. So now I'm going to load the pattern. So this is a general pattern that should be captured everything in your text object. 
If your text object varies or there's other patterns, then you will probably want to redefine or adding some more patterns in your in 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 in, in here. So so now you have the object you are going to search for and the pattern and the pattern like what kind of a what kind of um, strings that you're looking for. So now we can actually doing the search here. So we have a string locate. We can see that um, so for the first number, so for the first element that satisfies the condition here, we'll start from the first one, which is three, and then the, the last one is um, uh, the 12 um, in terms of length. So you can see that, um, yeah, so the only difference is that um, for the third element, it starts from seven. That's because the first digit appears at the at the seventh position since there's some words here or some other random um, uh, uh, characters here which which is not within our search so that's why that um, this uh, function um, shows that um, this pattern start from actually start from the seventh position in that in this entire string here so this means so the string locate will help us to locate where the where the patterns actually start in the string, and then it will filter out the the parts that is not within our search. So, but you see that um, actually in in our third element here we have three um, we have three um, different we have three different numbers, which which they are they should be all satisfies our condition here. But for string locate, it only it only returned the first um, the first um, result that satisfied the pattern. So there's another function called string locate all that will help you to find all th three um, starting and ending position for all three different numbers. So you can see that it actually it it returns a list, and then it is the same for the first element, the second element, and the fourth element. Only for the third element, you can see that there are, uh, um, are actually recognized that there are three different numbers here. So the first number start from seven and eighteen, and at an eighteenth position. Same for the second one, and then followed by the third one. So you can see that if you add a all at the end of the function, it will return all all the all all texts or all strings that. Uh, satisfy your condition comparing to the string locate which only returned the first satisfying re result okay so now I'm going to show you string extract so you can see that a uh, string extract will, will will capture the numbers here so for example the third one although there's text in it or or even a semicolon or a um, there are some other characters here, or 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 uh, words, but if you call string extract, it will only capture the number you're looking for. It will only capture the uh, the patterns here. So which is three digits, three digits, and then another four digits separate by some uh, special characters. So if you if you um, correctly define your patterns, then this function will only capture the parts that that are within your search. So same thing for uh, um, string extract all. It will for for the third elements. It will capture all the different all three numbers that are in different formats. And then if we add a simplify equal true, that it will return a table form. So uh, for third element, there are three phone numbers here, and then for for the rest of them has only one. So there's nothing in this in in the second or the third position. So now I'm going to look. Um, string match. So here you can see that um, it will capture the it will capture the phone number here, and then it will also extract the 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 parentheses that we that we set in the parents. So here we have we the parentheses where covers the first two, three digit, the second parentheses covers the second. Um, three consecutive digits and then the four digits. So you can see that the parentheses. Uh, so in the ex in the string match, the parentheses will return the things that we want to look for. So for example, if we want to, if we want to search for. So it, after we 
we store this table in the in the in the object. We can we can filter by the by the area code, for example, or maybe some the second group or third group. So this will help us to to separate the part here uh, by using the parentheses here um, and using the string match function. Same thing for string all. We can see that um, here. For the third element, we we capture all three numbers and all three patterns that we that we want to capture from using the parentheses in the patterns. So after we capture the the patterns, we can also replace the num replace the string in the in our pattern. So for example, we're going to replace the string, um, which whatever whatever uh, patterns that are satisfied in the string object we are going to um, to we're just going to replace by this um, becomes um, make it all X so you can see that um, so if if the pattern if the string satisfy the phone which is a pattern we are going to change it to all X here so you can see that for the for the first three elements, it only kept it only replaced the first uh, satisfying um, result. So if we call the string all, uh, you can see that the third the second phone number or the third will also become all axes here. So now let me. Okay, so. Um. So you can see that um, here, if we change the pattern here, which um, compared to our to compared to the to this pattern, we are only looking for the first three digit, and then a separation here, and then another three digits, and then we're going to replace this patterns to another to a also first three digit and another three digits but we are not looking for the last four digit so you can see that um, so for the first six digit it will change it to the pattern that we want it to but for the last four digit it would remain the same so it really depends on how you define your patterns so your patterns will, will is the key parts that will help you to correctly or um, get to the parts that you're searching the part you're looking for or even to replace the string so you really want to make sure that the pattern is 100% correct or um, it's make sure that it's exactly what you're looking for so if we call string replace all then it will replace um, for the third element here, it will replace all the all three numbers, all three phone numbers, with the with the with the patterns that uh, you want to replace. So we can locate a position, extract, and then extract the the, the part the pattern that you're looking for, and then even um, even you can capture capture the parts by using the parentheses in your patterns and also replace the string here. So now um, I'm going to give another example. So um, in my, uh, I used to work in a in a in a marketing uh, company, and then they have some kinds of uh, um, uh, email address. But um, so let's say, and then so let's say I'm going to uh, I'm going to work on I have I have some um, text mining in the for the te uh, for the email address. So now I'm going to give you. Another example how you can do this in R. So here we have uh, six different email address. Let's say um, so. Let, so here I define the pattern as um, the the special character at here for which is obviously each email address should contain a, a at in between between their username and their domain. So now I'm going to call this string split. So basically, it's just, uh, I'm going to split the elements. By the special character, so this will help. This will return the username before at and the domain name after the at. Okay. 
So you can see that um, the, um, the string split actually return a table, which is the username in the first column, and then the do, the, the domain, the do, domain in the in the in the second column. And uh, um, there's another function called string detect. So I'm going to look for um, which username contain the words Aaron. So you can see that only the first um, email address can, has the username, which is uh, Aaron. So let's see. Yeah. So this is a correct result. But if you but if you look at the fifth elements here, there's another Aaron here, but it is only the capital A. So you can see that if you define your pattern, uh, so that. Uh, if you define a pattern in all in lowercase, then if there's an uppercase here, it won't capture that. So this is a uh, this is a case sensitive um, function, and so you really want to define all the all possible cases in the way that you're look, you're searching for. So for example, in order to to look for the fifth element, the fifth errand here, you want. So I'm going to force all the email to the lower cases first. So I'm going to change all the all the characters here into lower cases first. And then I'm going to check if there's a if there's an error here. So now you can see that the function will return two email address here, which is both there are both errand, but one is lowercase and the other one is uh, uppercase. So I've changed so you can force this to lowercase first, and then do the do the do the cap do the searching. So here we can we are we are looking for the email address that contain digits here. So we can see that only the fourth email address that has um, two digits in, in its username. So I'm searching use, use uh, email, and then digit. This is a, a predefined uh, predefined patterns in in R. And I'm looking for two two digits here, so this is my pattern. So you can see that only the fourth um, elements here that satisfy this result, which is this email address here, which is what exactly what we want. So let's say if we are looking for three digits in the username, we can see that there's nothing here because there's no email address. That contains three digits in its um, in its uh, email in in its username. So if we call, if we look for the only two digits, this will return the the one that we're looking for. There are two digits in this username. So now I'm going to use um, if you are familiar with pipe in. So this is uh, from um, dplyr. And then I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to filter my search here. So this will. So let me re, let me get the result first. So this is um, so this only capture the email address um, that has a special character in it. So I'm going to explain. So. For piping, I'm going to uh, to first. Um, I'm going to um, I put here what I'm the, the 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 objects that I'm looking for, and then for the piping operator, it means uh for and then go down to my second condition, so which you already see bef seen before. This is I'm going to uh, split the string, um by uh by add. For this email, so this is my second condition here, and then another pipe in operator, and then I go into my third function here. So, so if you still remember that the string split will return a table, which is um, the first column is the username, and the second table, and the second column is the domain name. So in my second con in my second function here, I'm going to change that table, change the column name to username and domain. And then I'm going to pipe into to my third condition, which is I'm going to transfer it into a data frame. And then my 
fourth um, function here is that I'm only going to use the the first column. So I'm going to call a dollar sign username that will only capture the the first column. Then I'm going to detect if there is a special punctuation or a special special character that is not a word that is not a like a not a alphabetical letter in it. So I can I so I can show you step by step. So you can see that if I for the first for the second function I was split by the add. So this is basically the string split as we have seen in uh, previous um over um here. And then I'm going to include another 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 function here. So you can see that um the username and the dom and the, the column name has been changed. And then I'm going to change it to data frame. Uh, okay. I have to call the pipe pin first here. So now the this it be, so here you can see that it is a table here, and then here it becomes a, a data frame. So, and then I'm going to select the part, the username here, so you will see that it will only capture it will only return the username here. So it, uh, and then. For all the username here, I'm going to, to detect if there's a special punctuation here. Um, to call the piping operator, you just need to uh, press Shift and Control and then M, and then this will help you do to. Um, this is a shortcut for the pipe piping operator um, from D plier, and now. I'm going to check for the username if there's a there's a special character in the in this username, so you can only see that the last one is um is true, so the last one there's a special char character here uh, 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 a hyphen or the or the underscore in this username, so um and then I'm going to return the email that that satisfied the result. So this is a, um, a, a more complicated um, a search. So this, if you if you know exactly what you're looking for, and then if you can define the pattern uh, like uh, precisely, then um, that string R will help you to capture the the text that you're searching for. And using the pipe in operator, you can search. You can filter. You can filter your object in a different level. So first, you want to filter by this, and then the second step, and then the third step, and then the fourth step. If you if if your search is a is a it's a, a complicated one, so using the pipe piping operator, it, it will help you to 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 make your logic very clear, and then you can also search the pattern step by step. So um. So these are all the all the function in the in the string R, or you can or some people call it stringer. So um, thanks for watching and let me know if there's any question. Um, thank you very much.